Hi guys, welcome to another massive tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at drawing trig graphs. Now we had another video which done an introduction to trig graphs, but this one will look at slightly harder examples. So if we take a quick overview, a helpful tip for these questions is always to sketch the basic graph uh, to use first as a comparison. So we need to know what our baseline is. So we always draw the basic sine graph or the basic cos graph. Now you could be asked to manipulate these graphs in a multitude of different ways. You can either shift them up or down, stretch them in the x or the y axis, compress them in the x or the y axis, or shift them to the left and the right. Now you could be asked to do every single one of these and this would be the hardest question that you could ever be possibly asked. And again, just as it says, there's multiple adjustments in a single question. If you decide to take maths to higher level, you're guaranteed that you will have questions of this level of difficulty. So it's a good idea to let you see the hardest possible questions that you could ever be asked. So before we look at an example, let's have a look at the parameters first. So we will consider the hardest adjustment, okay? So it would look something like this. So we have y equals 2 sine brackets 2x plus 30 degrees, close the brackets, plus 1. Now this will manipulate every possible scenario that we mentioned before. But we will draw the basic sine graph and we will define its key parameters. So starting point is 0 and maximum turning point occurs when y is 1 and minimum applies at minus 1. The period is 1 which means we have one revolution within 360 degrees. So let's break this down. So a 2 in front of the sine of the cos means that we stretch the amplitude. Now the amplitude being the height between the starting point and the turning point and vice versa the starting point here and the turning point there. So it basically will stretch it in the y direction. It will not have an effect on the starting position. The 2 if it multiplies the x determines the number of revolutions within 360 degrees. So if we have a 2 here, it means we'll have 2 revolutions. So instead of it being from 0 to 360, this 1 revolution would be from 0 to 180, because we'd have to do 2 of these. Likewise, if that was 5x, then we'd have 5 revolutions within 360 degrees. Now, a plus or minus will inside the bracket will have an effect on the x-axis only because the x-axis is in degrees. So this is plus or minus 30 degrees. Now, this will shift the entire graph either left or right depending on the sign. And the clue is if it is plus, it will shift to the right. And if it is negative, it will shift to the left. And then the final parameter is if we have a value plus or minus just by itself. It's not attached to the sine or the cost term at all. It's by itself. This simply means that it will the entire graph will be shift up or down. And this has an effect on the starting position. So if it's plus, the whole graph will move up. If it is negative, the whole graph will move down. So keeping that in mind, just a quick reminder that the sine graph looks like this and the cos graph looks like this, sine being the characteristic S shape and cos being the characteristic V shape. Now sine will start at 0, go up to 1, cut at 180 degrees on the x-axis, down to minus 1 and then back to 360. Cos starts at 1, will cut at 90 degrees, turn at 180 cut it to 70 and finishes at 1 again. Now for one revolution, the value of y must be the same for the starting position and the end position. So sine starts at 0, it ends at 0. Cost starts at 1, it ends at 1. 
So let's put this into practice. It's asking us to draw the graph of y equals 2 sine x plus 1. So again, we will keep a copy of the original sine graph, which was the one we've just seen that goes to 1 and minus 1. And then we'll make a sketch. And remember, we have to label our x and y axis, put in the zero and we'll put in our degrees 90, 180, 270 and 360. Now the two which we were shown earlier, this two basically has an effect on the amplitude. So this will affect how far it will stretch between the starting position and the turning point. And then this one has an effect on the starting position which means the entire graph has been shifted up by one. So we'll extend the values in the y-axis and always consider the starting point first because that's your baseline. So we'll forget about this two just now and we'll consider the plus one. So the plus one means that instead of starting at zero, we're going to start at one because it's plus, it shifts up. Now I'm going to put a dashed line because what can happen is a lot of people will forget about the starting position and then when they come to the turning point they end up turning on zero when it should go further down. So have your dashed lines to indicate that this is your new starting position. So this is basically your new x-axis. Now if this was a case of sine x plus one we would go to two and we'd be at zero because the difference in the amplitude is always a factor of one because from zero to one, that's a difference of one and zero to minus one is a difference of one. So if we started at one and we didn't have this two, it would go one up to two and then one to zero. However, we are stretching it by two, which means we have to go up to three and then we have to go down to minus one because there has to be a difference of 2 between the starting point and the turning point. So now that we have our new limits and starting position defined, all we have to do is draw the graph, making sure it goes through the key characteristic points, i.e. the turning point on the x-axis is at 90 and 270, and it cuts the x-axis at 180 degrees. And then we have one revolution within 360. And that's how you would go about breaking down a question like this. And then we'll have a look at this one here. It asks us to draw y equals cos bracket 2x minus 20 degrees. So same as before, this will have a manipulation on the x-axis. We don't have any manipulation of the y-axis because inside the bracket just affects x and this 2 affects the x value as well. So we have no manipulation on the amplitude or shifting of the graph up or down. So like before, we'll have a copy of the original cos graph and it starts at 1, goes down to minus 1 and then regains at plus 1 at 360 degrees. So here is our graph x and y 0 and minus 1 and 1 because remember we haven't adjusted the y axis. Now this 2x here indicates that we will have two revolutions within 360 degrees and the minus 2, eh, minus 20 sorry, will indicate that the graph will shift in either the left or the right hand side. Now if it is minus it will shunt to the right, which means instead of starting at 0, 1, we are now going to start at 20 and 1, i.e. our new y-axis becomes this dashed green line. Now, we basically add on 20 to each of these values here because we are starting at 20 and up to 380, that is still 360 degrees. That hasn't changed. It's just instead of starting at 0, we are starting at 20. Now the 2x indicates that we will have two revolutions within the 360 degrees. So that's why the graph has been split up 
like this. Now again, it doesn't have to be to scale. On the computer it was a bit tricky to get them to look identical, but nonetheless, what you should have is the graph going through the key points and that it is labelled. If it is labelled and goes through the key points, you will get full marks in the exam. So we can see here that the first revolution goes from 20 and 1 all the way up to 201 because if it's 360 for one revolution, divide that by 2 is 180. However, it's been shifted 20 degrees to the right, so it has to be 180 plus 20. That's why it is 200. And then the same thing as before, and this time it's finishing on 380 instead of 360 degrees. And that's how you would go about solving a problem like that. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video.